Back when I was a small child, there was a well in my grandmother's house. It was a square block in the corner of the room, barely waist high to an adult, and with a cover sealing the moat. Whenever it was open, my grandmother would tell me not to look inside, or the belly would eat me. I asked her a few times what that was, and the only answer I ever got was, she lives in the well. I never thought to ask her why she kept a child eating monster down her well, and mostly would just go play somewhere else, because to a small child that was probably one of the least interesting corners of the house anyway. My encounters with fantasy fiction were limited to fairy tales at the time, so when I thought about it, which was not often, I used to imagine this hag-like creature with incredibly long gangly arms, because obviously if she lived down a well she'd need to have very long arms to grab around children off the top of the well. Now I had always assumed that it was something that my grandmother had made up to make sure I didn't get my ass killed, but a couple of years ago my girlfriend pointed out a small chapel the chapel of Our Lady of the Bellia. We got talking about the name, and although the name of the chapel was entirely unrelated, it turns out that the Bellia is a creature from local folklore. The word means swallower, or devourer if you want to be more grim dark. It was said to be a large fish or serpent-like creature, with a tongue like a frog, which it would use to snatch children and young people that got too close to its lair. The creature is associated with any number of wells and coastal caves, but it is only a very fair to in the singular. I don't know enough of local folklore to say if that is just because people claim it was the same individual creature everywhere, or if it was just the way of referring to the specific monster of the specific place. But if I had to stat this for a game, I think I'd go for the unique creature. A single being that stalks underground waterways, somehow finding its way from well to well and snatching innocent victims, is already horrifying enough. And let's face it, if there were several of the things, humans would not have lasted very long at all. While the details of the creature change with the telling, it's easy enough to see where the story comes from. Health and safety were not a big thing way back. And if you have a lot of wells and the bruise of children that were common way back when, it doesn't take a statistician to figure out that accidents will happen. Spin a tale of a terrifying monster waiting for children in the dark, and hopefully said children will be a lot less interested in hanging around in dangerous places. And the tale keeps getting told, and somehow it winds up in the head of a child in the 1980s. When I started this build, I wasn't heading in this direction. The original intent was to make a creature in a pit for the Halloween challenge I ran with my friend Mike from Net1 videos. But somehow the idea changed along the way and mutated into that old warning that my grandmother had given me, which I think is fairly appropriate. Halloween isn't really something I grew up with, but it's as good a time as any to take a minute to remember those who have passed on and swap old stories. Well. Thanks for listening to me ramble for a while. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to watch more crafting focus videos, you can find them linked here. Right now, Mike and I are starting another challenge, so if you want to join in, you can find the link to my Discord in the video description. Stay safe and have a great month.